Hi right, everyone. So we're extending our New York data set out. And one of the things that we've done is cover what we need to consider as we're building our single pane of glass for reporting. So we discussed last week, the last couple of weeks, building that semantic reporting layer and then how your report content exists above it. And what we're looking at today is going to be building that first kind of app-like experience to manage some of the map data that we've got to bring through, especially for bikes, because that we've just got latitude and longitude. We don't have borough information that we wouldn't need. Um, so we can do that and make that a nice efficient process. It's not really optimal, I think, to automate it. When I went through and fixed everything, it took more. So I'll show you what I've done. Um, and then we can discuss really one of the other things we go through as we're doing continual improvement cycles and how we can actually update semantic models and then move the secondary report content across. Champion. So here we are in the Power BI service. And you can see straight away from the map here, let's make this full screen. I've put some conditional formatting on it to show kind of highlight areas by number of bikes that have been hired there across the, the cycle, the period. But what we don't have is a way of knowing, well, these are the Manhattan bike hire places. These are the other ones. I'm going to forget. I can't remember which ones these are. I think this is Bronx. Is this Bronx? So we can't tell, can we? So we've got Manhattan, Queens, and Brooklyn down here, but we can't really see what's going on. We've also got some from Jersey City and Hoboken there as well, which we don't have in any other data in any of the other data sets. You know, the taxis does have the exception that they do include going over to Newark Airport, but that's it. There's no bike hire locations there. So there's some interesting things that we potentially want to be able to include or even exclude from our data set. So the sensible thing is going to be that we put something in so that we can actually have the borough information rather than we having to just put a layer or a reference layer underneath everything so we can see what's going on. And because it would be a proper layer in the data, we'd be able to filter, wouldn't we? So we'd be able to see, well, just show me the bike hire for Manhattan or for the Bronx or Brooklyn or Hoboken even. Yeah. So the way I've done it is I've actually combined a few things to figure it all out and to get it to go. And the first thing I've thought is, well, the best app is kind of no app, isn't it? So we've, I've gone down the let's try a no app approach for this for today. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Then I've also had to combine some data from um, Hatful of Data. So some methods from Hatful of Data in terms of the best way to extract Power BI information to, into something that can then be used by Power Automate. Um, and then I've also just referenced some of the stuff from this in data linear video or document just in terms of how best to set the filters up, how best to process the data that comes through. Um, and I'll show you what, how that all works in a second. So here we are, okay, I've created a SharePoint list going through, we've pulled everything through that we've got from it before already. Um, so the 2,300 or so that we had up till the end of June were there, and we can see already I've run it and we've got an updated list here. So these ones have come through. We don't have any area information though for them because we don't know. We've got latitude and longitude, but that's not enough to be able to work out what they are. What I've done though, is I've used some information from this guy here, um, Enjoy SharePoint. And what Enjoy SharePoint have done, it'll, recommended or talked through was how to update that and use the, X, the JSON formatting options that you get to make these links clickable. So it's easy enough to take two bits of field information and build a hyperlink, um, but then it, this now makes it much easier. So all I have to do is say, right, I'm going to look at this one. Where is it? I can click on it and it will open a map page, show me where it is, and then all I have to do is work out where that is. So we can see here, that's probably gonna be Queens by the looks of it, or it might be Brooklyn, because it's around that area where we're not quite sure. We've got a nice address next to it, we can click on that, and we can see it saying it's in Brooklyn. So then my workflow would be to go in, open these ones when they get updated, which would be once a month. For that one, we know we're gonna to need to make sure this one is actually in Brooklyn, 
So we're going to change the area to Brooklyn. So Brooklyn, I can go through and do that list. Okay, the way we know that I've got stuff to do is I set this up so it sent an email to me to say, well, these are the ones we've just added. So I've got some data flows written, it goes through, it refreshes all the data sets, and then it'll send through an update to say, oh, we've found some things to add, I've added them in, these are something you would need to process. So what you would do is you would set up the recipient list for it, and then somebody would, be going, would need to go through and do that. And we can set stuff up as well, because with it being SharePoint, we know it'll tell us who did the work. So if, if but it makes it really easy to know the stuff to be done, okay? I've made it even simpler as well, because I've picked an area where I've set up a view for no area. Now, this is why I'm saying no app can be better than the, the nice Swish Power app. You know, if all we have to do is come to this SharePoint location and I see, oh, these are there, I could even put a link to this within the email that gets sent out to people. So we can make it really simple, really easy for everyone to be on top and to stay on top of what's going on. Once that's there, we then bring it into, share, into Power BI and we update the model. So what I did was I've updated the model. If we go back to here, you can see I've now got bikes updated. We can click on that and we can see this is gonna load up. And this time I'm actually able to put a color filter or a legend on for the region or for the area that's being affected by this so you can see it zooms in, we've still got our reference layer and we've got these, here we go. And we've got these lovely little pink dots and these are the ones that haven't been updated yet. So we haven't assigned an area yet for them, so these are the blanks. So we'd easily be able to we could decide what we want to do with them. Do we want to exclude them? Do we want to leave them? But effectively, these should be the ones that arrived just last month. So it gives a clear way of working, doesn't it? So here we are, Power Automate. So what I've done effectively is we've got three flows that are really running what we do here and to make all this work for us. So we've got the first one, which is to refresh the Power BI report content or to do to get everything going. So if we have a quick look at this, you see when the data flow refresh finishes, so the main data flow refresh for all the bike data finishes, refresh the station data and refresh the bikes, sorry, that's the second one, isn't it? Um, so this is going to refresh the station report, which is what we're using to get the station data. Um, and it's also going to refresh the main Power BI report that we use. I've put the two separate because it makes sense to keep them separate because the stations is just, it's a holding area when we're going to bring everything through to. It's not somewhere that we're going to use. This is the one that is simply saying, well, when the main table refreshes, refresh the station data. Okay, so we've got a list of all, here's all the bike hires, and then we're pulling through the distinct list of starting stations with a latitude and longitude, and the distinct list of finishing locations with latitude and longitude, and then we're building that distinct list of the two things built together, um, just so that we've got something to put into our SharePoint list. And then the fun one, okay, and at the moment I've got it running on a schedule, so it's Sunday, the middle of the night. See, I did a lot of testing on it, and then we got it to work. So what this one does, this is where it got a little bit complicated and we could probably optimize this a little bit more and I haven't yet, okay? But I thought we'll get it working and we can see. So to start with, we've got our recurrence. We're initializing a variable that we're then gonna use. This is just gonna be an array variable that we use to put all the station names in from our SharePoint list. We run a query against the data set and you extract this query from Power BI Desktop. Um, it's really simple. You go through the Performance Analyzer. So you build your table that you're going to need, go into Performance Analyzer, refresh all the visuals, and then you copy the query out from there, paste it here. Thing to remember is it will build a top N version of it, so you need to put some numbers in there. I've just put 5,000 for now. So if we had more than 5,000 stations eventually, that would cause problems. Based on where we are, we've got 2,400 now, and we're adding about 15 a month based on it. So I think we've got a while to go before that becomes a problem. 
5,000 is about the data limit as well that realistically you can get away with in SharePoint. You can go a lot more, but at 5,000 it starts to get a bit creaky and you need to do some different things to keep everything moving. So 5,000 is gonna be our warning point if we cross that line. Once we've got that, we process the results with this parse JSON. We're then gonna get all the stuff out of our SharePoint list. We're gonna put all the station names into an array. So that's something that we're doing at the moment. And I think we might be able to avoid doing that, but I wanted to get this in and working first, because remember, one of the things I keep telling you is continual improvement. Don't try and get everything perfect on day one. You get it working on day one, and then we can fine tune and tweak areas so we're not actually holding everyone up by not being able to do it. In terms of the practical side of this, this is taking about five minutes to run at the moment. In theory, we could get that back down to probably less than a minute, but at five minutes on an enterprise grade solution happening Sunday night, once a week, I don't think anyone's gonna really go, oh, it's terrible, okay? We're then doing some things just to convert the way that the JSON is built because of the nature of the tools that come through. So basically, the data set query returns or is built, it looks like it's been built ready to handle multiple queries, but at the moment it can only handle one. So it's got this array of, an array of results that you need to handle. Um, so we're just trying to remove that array and then convert that back into a JSON. Pretty sure those two are identical though, so we might be able to again just use the compose. Then we're doing the filter. This is the main thing. So we're saying, is our station name already there? And if it is, we'd remove it. If it isn't, we're then creating the items for it. So we're doing a for each loop. Again, if you look at the articles that we're gonna that are gonna be in the description down below, you can create um, an HTTP API call and send the whole package to it at once. Um, in practice, if it's 15, um, you're just adding a layer of complexity as opposed to just being able to use native permissions and connections within SharePoint. So it's it's one of those where you could find it's you add a layer of complexity and it's gonna cost more to manage and maintain it if something goes wrong versus we just use simple components in a for each loop. Again, 15 a, me a month, Probably not worth it. We keep an eye on it. We're building the HTML table, which is what we get sent in the email. And then lastly, we're sending the email out. And as you can see, we're just dumping the body into it or the table, sorry, into that. We could structure that a lot more neatly and make that into something that's much more usable. But that's really simple, isn't it? I think you could, anyone could do that, couldn't they? So we've gone through, we've built that. Once all that's done, this is the result. You get this beautiful list that you can pull everything in and I've suddenly got the ability to see and filter based on regions. And we can see there are some that potentially, well, we've got some issues here where we've got some cross contamination as it were between Brooklyn um, and Queens. Um, we've got this one here, Manhattan in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and the one that I find really confusing was this one here in the middle of Rikers Island. There's a bike hire place in a prison. I, I'm not sure. I don't think that's quite right. but. Basically, we've used the data that we've got and having this SharePoint list would mean it's easy enough to identify these are the ones we need to go and tweak or we want to fix this one. We can update it, um, probably not that one, because we might have to do some digging into where that is, but where we've got just some disparity, shall we say, and where these, these areas are, these dots are, we could move them. So what do you reckon then? Being able to pull everything together into a simple list in SharePoint has made it possible for us to easily put a workflow together for a team to be able to manage the changes that are going to go on over the life cycle of the New York bike hire. Um, you know, they're going to add new stations, they're going to potentially remove stations as well. And this allows us to actually put everything in and see what's happening. And based on it, we can then build that monthly report pack. We can start to track what's new, what's happened. In theory, because we've got a created date based on SharePoint, we can start to look, well, when was this station name added to that list? So we'd see what's been added last month, what's been added. Obviously, we've got our big chunk that all, were all created when we built the list. 
But going forward, any new ones we'd be able to do. So we'd be able to see, oh, this new one's been added. Um, and I think I saw there's one next to, that's been added just right next door, as it were, to the busiest station that we've got on the, on the network, I think, in, with 800,000 bikes hired at one location. Um, so being able to piece all these things together easily and efficiently and put something in place that really anyone can manage means that my data team, when they come in and they build a solution, it doesn't need that high skill level to maintain and manage and keep the system running. We've used simple data flows within Power BI. We've used simple pro, uh, process automate flows as well within process automate, or what used to be data, what used to be flow, wasn't it? Which is why it causes so many problems within the Power Automate land. So we've got two really simple tools that we're using being supported by SharePoint lists, which are again super simple to get started with from your data side. And this is why we keep coming back to SharePoint lists are definitely fit for purpose for business. So let me know your experiences down below. Tell us what you think. And of course, as always, if you feel the need to get in contact with us and to get some support and guidance from us, the email is office at geordieconsulting.co.uk. Send us an email and we'll get in touch. We'll have a chat and hopefully we'll support you not hopefully, we will support you and make you get to that next level of data awareness in your organization. For now, though, stay safe and take care. Ta-da.